Hey everybody, my friends at XYZ Printing wanted me to show you guys some of the techniques that I'm using to accomplish full color 3D models. Adding color data to your 3D models is a great way to future proof your designs as full color in your 3D models won't necessarily affect the way that they print on normal 3D printers, but with the DaVinci Color and in the future, you might be able to use those models and, and have them be at the forefront of the next revolution in 3D printing. Now, I use a lot of different programs, and I'll hopefully get to show some of those to you, but today, I want to start with Tinkercad. So let's jump over to that, and let me show you what I do. So here's a little scene that I've put together to show you guys how I do full color modeling in Tinkercad. And in the past, when I've talked about this, I used this pencil to show it to you. Now this pencil, if I ungroup it, I'm going to assume that you have some base knowledge of using Tinkercad. So I'm not going to worry about talking about grouping and ungrouping basic operations in Tinkercad. But I created this pencil by taking a hexagonal cylinder and making part of it yellow and then another one next to it that's brownish and another part next to it that's brown or black. These are separate objects that I'm just putting next to each other. For the point I took, if, if you're not aware of this technique, let me dive into this for just one second. So I take a cone hole into a cube that's bigger than the thing that you want to cut out. And then I group them both together. Then I take that grouped object, I turn it into a hole, and I put it over what I want to do. This kind of creates ultimately an inclusion. There we go. Then I can select all of them and group them. Now, of course, when you group them, Tinkercad puts them all with a single color, but you come up here to the solid color and choose instead to do multicolor, and boom, there you go. Now, this pencil model could mostly be printed on a normal FFF 3D printer. If you just turn it up on its end, you can print the bottom part in red and then stop the print, change your filament to gray or silver or white, then print it up a little bit higher, then stop your print, change your filament to yellow, print it, then stop your print, change it to brown, then stop your print and change it to black. It's intensive, but it could be done. But with the Da Vinci Color, you can actually put text on the side of it, which you couldn't do with any other 3D modeling process. And this text is flush to the surface. It's not standing out. It is just details that are on the surface that no other modeling process will show. And I kind of used this a little bit, a very, very little bit, when I made my Bot Blitz Big Brute Battery Bit Battle uh, board game. Whew. And uh, let me show you a little bit about that. So this is one of the command chips that you use in the game. And in this game, these are how you communicate what your moves are going to be. Now, if you're doing this with just, just a single color, it's got enough information there for you to be able to play the game. You can see the text because I raised it up from the surface. However, look at the side here. These little details, these are meant to look like the leads on a chip. And they do kind of look like that, but if you look at it in full color, you'll see that that white extends across the surface of this to really look like a chip. It's, it's a tiny little detail, but something that I was really excited to take advantage of full color to do. Here's another model that I want to look at. This is, this is another one of the pawns that I'm going to be using in a future game that I'll share with you. This robot is my Simon robot. And again, let me show you what happens if you do him in single color. It's fine, right? I mean, you can see the shape of the robot. You can see he's got a big computer head. It's, it's fine. You can do this with a single color process and nothing important particularly is lost. But if you do multicolor, check it out. The, the face, the screen gets some color details on it. The chest gets the details and the back of him, you can see, oh, he's, he's a computer body. That's the way I designed him was to be a computer body. And sure enough, the print has all of these details in it. It is super cool and super exciting. So 
I, I really, I really kind of enjoy that. And, and I enjoy being able to show off that part of Simon with the Da Vinci color and, and having full color available to me is super cool. Now, whenever I teach people how to use Tinkercad, the first thing that I always teach them is kind of a keychain. You learn how to group and you learn how to make holes and all those sort of things. But for this project, I wanted to make a keychain in full color. And of course, I put my name on there, but I did this again flush to the surface. So if this were printed in a single color process, it would be a cute tie, but not very impressive. Now I put together on the side here a little bit of the process that I used for making this. So let's take a look at that. To start with, I took colored blocks like this and just lined them up next to each other. And I did it so that they were tilted and lined them up straight and then tilted them. If I were doing it again, I would leave them straight up and down so that I could move them and I would just tilt the template that I was using to cut out of it, but live and learn as it were. Then I took the lettering and made sure that it was the exact same height as everything, which I made the whole thing two millimeters and just kind of stuck it in the middle and made it flush to the top. Then I needed to create the template. And of course, being me, I wanted to make it look like a tie. So I had to create the shape of a tie. And then once I had that shape done and made it taller than I needed, I put it into a block just like before, grab both of them, group them together and turn that grouped object into a hole. Then I brought that into my tie and I grabbed put a hole in there so that I could do it, lined everything up properly and grouped it. Now let's see if this groups properly because sometimes when Tinkercad does this, it doesn't. No, it did fine. And I can tell because it's the color of the text so that when I pull it into multicolor, the text is on top. But if it shows up being any other color in the solid color, there's a chance that those flush objects, it, it might get confused about which one. And if that happens, simply ungroup it, reselect them, making sure to select the text first and then regroup them and it should work just fine. But this one worked just fine. Also, let's check out this really cool model that I made. I found this horse on Tinkercad and I created a copy of it. And then I modified and put them up on his rear legs and I did a different colored horn for him or actually I did it an entirely different horn I don't think it was originally a unicorn uh, modified this and then I created the rainbow and the rainbow is you could probably tell just looking at it just roofed what is this called rounded roof objects that I then took and made it copies of them moved them in gave each one a different color grouped them together and there you go created a really cool rainbow for it. And look at this print. It's a it's a great little bookend. It's absolutely beautiful. The Da Vinci color did a great job of capturing the color. I, I love the mane and the rainbow effect on here. It is just, it's, it's a, I'm really proud of this print. I think it's absolutely beautiful and it was really fun. Now, once you have the model done and you're ready to export it and 3D print it or, or upload it somewhere to be 3D printed, you have to do something just a little, little bit different than what you would normally do. What you would normally do in Tinkercad is you'd select the model, you'd hit export and you'd click STL. Well, don't do that. Slide your pointer over just a little bit to OBJ and click on that one and it will download a zip file. If you ever want to do anything with those files, you're going to have to unzip them and you will find in there, there are two files that you're working with. The files are this, a tinker.obj file and an obj.mtl file. These files are linked together. The OBJ file contains the geometry, the shape of your object, and the MTL contains your color data. Now, if you wanted to rename these files because Tinker and OBJ don't really describe things well for you, well, don't. You could rename the OBJ file, that's fine, but if you rename the MTL file, then the OBJ file will be lost. It won't know what MTL file to use and you'll lose all of your color data. Even though it's sitting right there, 
when you change the file name, it won't be able to find it. So I don't recommend you do that. Instead, I recommend you just kind of leave them in their same directory and work with them together. It's, it's a great way to keep them organized. If you try to put more than one OBJ file in the same directory, it can be confusing as to which one's got the OBJ for this one and which one's got the MTL for this one. Until Tinkercad decides to rename those something else, don't rename them, just leave them in their own directory. And remember that you need both of them to get the color data. So just upload the zip file that you download from Tinkercad and you'll be good to go. Now, fortunately, your slicer probably already works with OBJs, even if you're doing a single color process. So don't feel bad about just keeping OBJs around. You can pretty much forget about STLs from now on because OBJ contains that information and more. But if you wanted to upgrade to another file format like 3MF, you're going to have to use this OBJ to bring that color data in. Hey, one quick aside while I've got this open. I wanted to share with you guys about how Tinkercad can allow you to share your files. You can, just like Thingiverse or any other repository, if you exit out to the main menu on Tinkercad here, you can then pull up your design, hit the gear icon right there, and edit the properties of it. You can change a name, you can give it a quick description, which is very good, and then you can add tags to it and then make it public. Now I recommend if you're going to be designing with full color that you should tag things both with the full color tag and full color all one word, so that if anybody has a full color 3D printer that they wanted to print these on, they could find your designs and they'd be applicable for that. And I think that would be really cool and a lot of fun. So there you go. Be sure to mark your designs as public. And if you want to share them with me, come over to my Discord channel, post them up there, and we'll go check them out. I'd love to see what you guys are designing in Tinkercad in full color. So there you go. Tinkercad is not difficult at all to go from just doing regular modeling like you're used to doing to going and doing full color modeling. It's literally just grabbing the color and choosing to do it multicolor and boom, there you go. There is another YouTuber who does 3D modeling videos. Her name is Uni and she did a series of, of cars and R2D2s and houses recently and she was doing them in full color because it looked good on the YouTube videos and I said, would you just upload the OBJs from there so that I could print them in full color? And she did, and I did, and I got to present these to her at the Bay Area Maker Fair. And she was so excited to see the design that she made in the colors that she made printed out. Now, this one, of course, the colors were failing, and so it ended up more striped than the design that she came up with. I gave her the good one. I'm keeping this one for myself. So there you go. Doing color in 3D modeling, it's really not that intimidating, and Tinkercad makes it just so easy to jump into. I hope that this video has been informative for you, and thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for watching. Hey, if I mentioned anything in this video, you'll find a link to it in the cards and you should check that out. Did you know that I'm social? I've got links to all the socials and you should stop by and say hi. I really kind of enjoy it when that happens. Big thanks go out to my direct backers. And if you want to know more about how you can become that, there'll be a link right here that you can check out. And as always, I want to remind you safety first because I care about you and I'll see you next time. Oh, that's interesting. Classic one there.